we're just going to accept this blatant inconsistency as truth because that's what we think is true based upon our system. It is, it is absolutely unequivocally a blind spot of the Calvinistic worldview. And some people have been asking me, how do Calvinists reply to this? They say things like, Leighton, you don't understand Calvinism. That's how, I'm not trying to be mean. That's how they respond to this. Do you know why Jesus taught in parables? It was a judgment. It was a judgment. A judgment? It was a judgment to take away an ability you were born without. It was a judgment. There's a, there's a, there's a kid born without eyes. He grows up. He had never has eyes. And, and God says, and, and this kid without eyes does all of these bad things throughout his life. And God says, okay, you know what I'm going to do to you? Because of judgment for your sins, I'm going to take away your eyes. And the kid goes, uh, I was born without eyes, God. And you're going to take away the eyes that I don't have. Why are you judging me by taking away something I wasn't born with? John MacArthur, you're a smart man. You're an intelligent man. How in the world is God judging people by taking away an ability they were born without? That makes no rational sense. And I think you know it. Deep down, I think you know this doesn't make rational sense, which is why you won't talk about the messianic secret in parables at the same time you're talking about the tea of tulip. Unwillful, hard-hearted unbelief. For whoever has, to him more shall be given. And he will have an abundance. That's you, disciples. But Okay, notice, he who has will be given more. Now, who would that be? People like Cornelius? People like Simeon? People throughout the, the Old Testament who knew and believed the truth that they had? They didn't know who Jesus of Nazareth was. They didn't know the story of death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't know the Messiah would die for the atonement of the world. They didn't know all these details. What did they know? They, they feared the God of Israel. They believed in the revelation they had been given. They had a little, so what were they given? They were given more. This is what John 6 and so many other passages are talking about. Those who are given by the Father to the Son are those who have listened and learned from the Father. Who are the sheep in John chapter 10? The sheep are those who follow the Father. And Jesus says, you don't believe in me, the Son, because you have not listened to my Father. You are, you are not a, a learner of the Father. Those who listen and learn from the Father would recognize my voice because I speak the same thing as my Father. But you don't believe because you're not a sheep. You're not a follower of God. Those who have a little will be given more. But those who don't have any, what they have will be taken away from them. What's he talking about? That's he talking about hardening. Those who have rejected the little that you have been given, the revelation you have been given, and you continue to grow hardened to it, I'm not going to give you more. I'm going to take away what you do have in judgment for what you have. That's the context of this verse. Listen. Whoever doesn't have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. This is a judgment. They okay, and why are they in that condition? As we've read from Acts chapter 28, quoting from Isaiah, okay, he says, they have grown calloused. Their eyes have grown darkened. They no longer see. They no longer hear because they have closed their eyes. Not because they were born without eyes. Not because they were born corpse-like dead, thus with the moral incapacity to believe. They close their eyes. They are in this condition not because of a, 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 a decree of God. They're in this condition because of a free choice to refuse the truth of God over and over and over again to the point now they've grown callous to it. In other words, it's their fault, not God's fault. Now, I know Calvinists would never say it's God's fault. They wouldn't use that kind of vernacular. But the systematic implies it. It's the natural implication, the logical implication of their system. If they are born because of a divine decree with a moral incapacity to do anything except reject the gospel, then that is God's fault by definition. It is God's doing. God chose to do this to them. God chose to punish Adam and his descendants by putting them in a room where they could not hear and understand and believe the gospel, morally speaking. But he, he is the one who decided for their indecision. He is the one who decreed their inability on Calvinism. And therefore, their blameworthiness is far less than what it would be on our system where they actually freely choose to do this. Listen. They hide truth in riddles. 
This is a judgment on final unbelief. This is why Jesus taught in parables. Judgment on those who rejected His clear teaching. Judgment on those who reject His clear teaching. Yet John Piper, John MacArthur, why do they reject His clear teaching? Because God decreed for them to be born in a moral incapacitated state where they could only reject His clear teaching. In other words, He is judging them for that which He decreed for them to be and to do from birth. How do you judge somebody for their blindness by making them more blind when they're totally blind from birth? Again, it does not make any rational sense. Now let me add a note. Parables were also mercy. There, there's a mercy element in this judgment because if He keeps speaking to the crowds in clear, unmistakable terms and keeps explaining Scripture and proclaiming objective doctrinal truth, their culpability increases. So there is within the judgment of speaking in riddles and parables both a curse and a mercy. Let that sink in just for a moment. Let that just let, let, let the cognitive dissonance of that statement sink in. There's a bunch of blind people standing around without eyes. They don't have no retinas. They have no eyes whatsoever. They're just completely blind. And what he's saying is, it's actually merciful. He's got the spotlight. He's shining the spotlight in all of their eyes. He's shining this light. He's saying, okay, I'm taking away this light from all these blind people so that it's merciful, more merciful for them on judgment day because, after all, if I shine more light to all these blind people, then they're going to be more culpable for their rejection of all this light. Why? They're blind. <laughs> they can't see a little bit of light. They can't see a huge amount of light. They can't see any amount of light because of a condition they're born in, according to the systematic you claim to believe. And that's supposed to make any rational sense to us? What makes rational sense is if these people actually have the spiritual ability to see and reply to light. And they're brought a little bit of light and they reject that little bit of light, and then God in judgment removes the light from them. Whereas those who accept the little amount of light, he does what? He brings them more light. He brings them more truth. That's what makes rational sense. But what you're saying doesn't make any sense with the claims of your system. L listen to what he goes on to say here, because here in this next clip, you're going to hear MacArthur explain exactly why people can't receive the truth of Revelation. Listen. Look, there's something profound and deep in the heart of every unconverted person. And it is this. They are in the kingdom of darkness. They are cut off from the life of God. They are alienated from God. They cannot understand the things of God. They are foolishness to them. They eagerly believe lies because their father is the liar. And when the truth is spoken, the default position is going to be to reject the truth. The default position is to reject truth. So Jesus had to preach to them in parables lest they accept the truth? I thought the default position was the, them to reject truth. Why would he need to be, speak in parables lest they accept truth if their default position is for them to always reject truth? Again, cognitive dissonance makes no rational sense whatsoever, yet they continue to say these things. Listen. That means that the only way they will ever be able to accept the truth is if God, in His power, changes the condition of their heart. And that's what the Bible calls regeneration. God, the Holy Spirit, has to give life to the dead, sight to the blind, understanding to the ignorant. That's a divine miracle. And when the Spirit of God does that and they hear the truth, then they are awakened to believe. But Scripture is very clear. We should not expect unbelievers to love the truth. It's alien to their very nature. Okay, so it's alien to their very nature, meaning from birth. This is a condition they have from birth. They are born in this condition. They are, they are God-haters from birth. They reject the truth from birth. They will never accept the truth, no matter how clearly it's preached. Yet, when preaching about Mark chapter 4 or Matthew 13, the parabolic use of Jesus, Jesus uses these parabolic truths to bring judgment upon people 
for things they cannot do anyway, and to prevent them from doing something they were born unable to do. And yet we're just going to accept this blatant inconsistency as truth because that's what we think is true based upon our system. It is, it is absolutely unequivocally a blind spot of the Calvinistic worldview. And some people have been asking me, how do Calvinists reply to this? They say things like, Leighton, you don't understand Calvinism. That's how I'm not trying to be mean. That's how they respond to this. Every time I brought this up with Calvinistic friends, well, Leighton, you just don't get it. You're not, you're not following. You're not understanding. This is just God uses means. Is, is Sean Cole's response was God uses means. Um, and so means the means of keeping a blind person, a dead reprobate, out of the kingdom is by using parabolic language in the same way that they use means like the gospel to bring the elect into the kingdom. God also uses means like blinding people using parabolic language, the reprobates. Okay. So means mean something, right? And so if the means of parabolic language are being used, what are the means accomplishing that's not already accomplished by their innate condition from birth? In other words, if they're born without eyes, then what does the blindfold accomplish? It's just redundant. It's just the same reason that Satan is redundant on Calvinists. Why is he going around plucking the seed and blinding the eyes of people who are born dead and unable to believe the seed anyway? Satan is completely redundant on Calvinism. There's no reason for Satan to do his work on Calvinism if Calvinism's form of deterministic soteriology is true. Because Satan's not blinding anybody. He's not hiding the truth from anybody. They're, they're born without the ability to understand and believe truth. And so all of these things make Calvinism's doctrines seem completely inconsistent with the other claims of Scripture. And that's why we're calling it out. That's why we're bringing these things to light. That's why we're helping people to understand where these things fall apart. 